Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Mess. So, Terry going to continue a series on all of these different Nintendo lawsuits and DMCAs going around with Yuzu, Suyu, Citra, and everything else. I've been getting a lot of questions about this series and it's been very popular. And one of the number one questions I keep getting is why do these emulator makers not fight this? How is this ever going to be decided if it only goes to settlements or DMCA takedowns? So, that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today how this actually sees a conclusion and whether or not I think it's actually going to ever see a conclusion. It is a very complicated topic. But the thing is, where does this end? Nintendo is definitely on the warpath trying to take down certain emulators, whether through lawsuits, settlements, or DMCA takedown requests to different Git repositories. They clearly do not want Switch emulation to exist, but a lot of people, including me, think that if they saw a court case based on the sheer facts, that they would most likely lose. Nintendo went after Yuzu first, saying that the Switch emulator was piracy at a colossal scale. They've gone and sued Tropic Haze, that is settled, Citra, Yuzu are dead. But the question is, what would happen if this saw the inside of a courtroom without any of the baggage of Yuzu and potentially them sharing unreleased games? But it was shocking how quickly Yuzu settled to some people, but this is what I predicted in a previous video and it is all down to the fact that fighting these cases costs an incredibly large amount of money. We're going to talk about it throughout the video, but honestly, if you look at Nintendo's market capitalization, the money they have in the bank, it would take a company like Microsoft, Sony, or Apple to actually spend the money to see the inside of a courtroom with them. They could burn off $50 million in court fees and they wouldn't even blink an eye. Now think about what emulator maker could possibly say that. Obviously, Yuzu's been halted, and there's been different forks, the biggest one being Suyu, not just because the name is a little bit funny, but because they are trying to do things way more legally, and Ryujinx here is still available as of the recording of this video. Somehow, they are avoiding the scrutinous eye of Nintendo, which is very interesting. That probably means they've done nothing that Nintendo thinks they can win in court about, so they are not going to touch this, because I really don't think Nintendo wants to see a courtroom. But where does it go now? Obviously, a lot of these emulators have been killed. Nintendo keeps seeming to pick off any sort of fork of Yuzu. So that's the question. Where does this go now? How does it get decided in the future? Who's going to sue who? We don't know until that happens. And if Nintendo does sue another party, are they going to actually defend themselves with lawyers and try to become victorious in court? And will this case actually be decided if it does get sued again? It's very likely Nintendo brings another lawsuit against somebody else, and that settles as well because Nintendo's a gigantic juggernaut. It costs a ton of money to actually see the inside of a courtroom for any of these cases, and pretty much every emulator maker out there does not have the resources to be able to actually fight this case in open court. That is the problem. Let's go back a little bit in history and talk about Sony Computer Entertainment versus Blue. If you're not aware, Bleem was an emulator that you could use on Dreamcast to run some PlayStation 1 games with enhanced graphics. This is a very unique emulator and it was very interesting as far as the court case is concerned. And this is a court decision that is often pointed to to talk about the legality of emulation and why it is permissible. So Bleem won over Sony. You would think that that would be a good thing. And as far as the future of emulation was concerned, it was a very good thing. But how did it turn out for Bleem? Sony went so far as to sue them for using screenshots in comparisons on the Bleem case artwork, and that had to go to court to be decided whether or not it fell under fair use. Now, fair use is something that comes up a lot in my line of work, a filmmaker. I am not a lawyer, just an armchair quarterback lawyer. And you'll see here that they had to go through so many different lawsuits and decide whether or not those screenshots were fair use. And the reality is, even though Bleem won all of these cases and had a protective order against Sony, it didn't turn out well for them in the end. And this is a classic example of being able to be right and still losing at the exact same time. Because they had a judge issue a protective order allowing them to distribute Bleem, but then Sony went with a copyright allegation of those screenshots. They basically were using the courts to fill up all of Bleem's plate with expenditures. If you can't win because you're right, you can win by a battle of attrition. There were so many different lawsuits aimed towards Bleem. They were hemorrhaging money left, right, and center. And obviously, if you compare Sony Computer Entertainment of America to Bleem, you could probably guess who has more money. The reality is it took about a million dollars per patent to actually be able to fight this. What happened in the end? Bleem won. They went out of business. Bleem development stopped. Sony got what they wanted in the short term 
even if it protected emulation in the long term. That is why something like Yuzu settling so quickly makes total sense. They cannot afford to fight this case. No emulation maker can afford to fight it. So you can win and still lose. Sure, Bleem had that court victory, but they spent basically every single dollar they had defending themselves they could not dig out of the hole. Now think about how much Sony Computer Entertainment of America spent on that. It was probably a rounding error in Sony Corporate's overall accounting for that year. They probably made more on interest in deposits in the bank on cash they were sitting on than they actually spent on that court case in the time it took to fight it. That's how difficult this is. Let's move over to Sony Computer Entertainment Incorporated versus Connectix. They made another PlayStation 1 emulation system and this was also sued and Connectix did win. This is another court case that is often pointed to is giving the foundational legality for software emulation on video game systems. This is why you could emulate PlayStation 1 on Mac back in the day. Day. Now this story ends a little bit different, but it's also another way in which it can end so that the console manufacturer gets their way and they still don't have to allow emulation for the interim because the reality of this is all that happened is Connectix won the injunction and then what did Sony end up doing? They just bought the damn thing to get it off the market. Yes, we still have PlayStation 1 emulation because this court case showed us that that was allowed. This also allows us to have PlayStation 2 emulation and we can play that right now it is perfectly legal unless sony decides to sue over this we even have playstation 3 emulation but what if sony wants to start dipping into the back catalog and releasing a lot more games on playstation 5 or playstation 3 might they sue it's very possible and the other way you can be right and still lose is i'm sure sony offered just enough money for connectix to say screw it we don't want to fight this anymore you can have it and it's not like sony did much with it after the fact if you can't beat them buy them that is a business axiom if you can't compete if you can't win a court case but you can offer enough money to buy your competition out from underneath you you can catch and kill this software that's a term thrown around a lot when it comes to news stories catch and kill you buy the exclusive rights to a story and then you never run it it's done for athletes and celebrities all the time i have done it for people before it is legal and it is fun but honestly if you go back even further you have sega versus accolade this is another reverse engineering case and this is the only time in which the console manufacturer lost and the company accolade continued to at least exist but they lost up to 25 million dollars in revenue and money in fighting this case. Who has $25 million right now? That is the real question. Yes, this established the guidelines for permissible reverse engineering, and it was a very important court case, and it's a really good thing a claim won because this gives us a lot of the legal foundation as to why reverse engineering this hardware and this software is legal in the first place. So big credit to a claim that is very important. But the reality is Tropic Haze, the company behind Yuzu, doesn't have $25 million to lose here. They're paying Nintendo $2.4 million, but that is a drop in the bucket compared to $25 million. And don't forget, that was back in the early 90s with inflation and everything going up. To have that same court case today, you're probably talking about $50 million plus. Think about what emulation developer would have 25 to $50 million sitting around. You would have to have some sort of civil rights group on the electronic side of things decide to fund the case for you or provide you with free lawyers to ever actually see a court case. Because who would have the money to fight this? Microsoft would if they decided to sue Nintendo or defend them, but honestly, that's not going to happen. Sony would have enough money to sue Nintendo and defend against it, but they've only sued emulation makers. Clearly, they're on the same side, and I'm just giving you examples of companies that have the resources. The reality is no emulation maker will ever be able to afford to fight Nintendo in court even if they're right. So how does this end? It doesn't. Nintendo continues to file lawsuits against people who can't afford to defend them and they get to crush the work whatever it may be. They get to use the DMCA takedowns to stop things and if they really wanted to do something they could just offer to buy the emulation from the makers and they would probably sell for the price. So the reality is it's whack-a-mole all the same. We're done and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.